Resolution 1550. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Gentlemen, Speaker, recognize. Mr. Speaker, this resolution provides for consideration of the Senate amendment to the House amendment to the Senate amendment to H.R. 4213, the Unemployment Compensation Extension Act of 2010. Finally, uh, the rule makes in order a motion offered by the chair of uh, the Committee on Ways and Means or his designee uh, that the House concur in the Senate amendment to the House amendment to the Senate amendment to H.R. 4213. The pr rule provides one hour of debate on the motion equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking me uh, minority member of the Committee on Ways and Means. The rule waives all points of order against consideration of the motion except those Rule 21. Finally, the rule provides uh, that the Senate amendment shall be considered as read. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 4213, the restoration of Emergency Unemployment Compensation Act of 2010, ensures uh, that much needed federal assistance continues to reach the millions of Americans struggling to find a job, trying to keep their homes and doing the best they can to provide for their families. This legislation is long overdue, with unemployment benefits having expired on June 1st of this year. Though I'm pleased that this legislation is retroactive to that date, millions of Americans who desperately needed our support were left hanging by the egregious obstructionism that prevented this legislation from moving forward. While the other party is content with giving themselves a pat on the back for every roadblock they throw in front of a democratic bill, I remind my colleagues that they are playing with the livelihoods of countless hardworking Americans. What is merely a political win uh, for them is in reality another family that can't make rent can't send their kids to college or can't pay their medical bills. As we are well aware, much of the debate surrounding this bill has centered on its cost. Now, we in the Democratic Party believe that balancing the budget is vital for our long-term prosperity. But it cannot be done on the backs of struggling Americans. Over the past few weeks, my Republican colleagues have railed on about Democrats uh, for not cutting the deficit or spending beyond our means. But I wonder if my Republican co colleagues have looked in the mirror lately. I've been here for some time, and I can't for the life of me remember any calls for fiscal discipline when their party was cutting taxes for millionaires and billionaires, sending a blank check overseas, or squandering a $127 billion federal budget deficit, or surplus. Time and again, my colleagues' actions simply do not match their rhetoric. Further cutting the budget and denying unemployment benefits are going to make jobs magically appear. Such actions will only cause our economy to contract and leave more people out in the cold. Our economy needs a deliberate, targeted approach to job creation and economic growth, and that is what Democrats will provide. To say, as my colleagues often do, that Democrats are moving in the wrong direction and doing nothing to create jobs is simply a bald-faced lie. Over the last year and a half, We've gone from a period of negative growth uh, to consistent increases in our GDP. We've gone from 22 months of job loss uh, to six straight months of private sector job creation, albeit not nearly enough. We've gone from shuttered factories to the largest 12-month gain in industrial production since 1998. Make no mistake. Job creation is the number one priority uh, for Democrats. But as the job market recovers, 
there remain far too many who are out of work and losing hope. While my Republican colleagues question the need to lend a hand to those who are struggling, I question their aversion to provide opportunity to those